It's Madden NFL 24 on EA Sports. And if it's in the game, it's in the game. It's the Miami Dolphins and the Philadelphia Eagles. And it's coming up next. Well, the skies are clear, the sun is out, but don't be deceived. There's a big time nip in the air on this crisp autumn day at Lincoln Financial Field. Coming up, we got a good matchup on tap here as it'll be the Miami Dolphins taking on the defending NFC champs, the Philadelphia Eagles. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Well, what a season it was for these Eagles and these Philly fans last year. An 8 no start. 14-3 final record, two blowout wins in the NFC playoffs before coming up a bit short in Super Bowl 57. And the good thing for Philadelphia is they try and get back to the Super Bowl. Many of the key pieces they had last year are back. Remember, this is the number three offense in the league, number two defense, and they threw in a heck of an NFL draft. They expect to contend one more time. Meanwhile, for the visiting Dolphins, we know about the weapons on offense on the perimeter. But you think this is a team, Charles, that needs to step it up defensively to go to the next level? I do. And they have the pieces in place. They have excellent players. Perhaps the new system that's been brought in will give them that edge that they need in the AFC East. Here's the kicker, Jake Elliott, ready to get this one started. And off we go from Lincoln Financial Field. This fielded right at the goal line. And some good special teams coverage as they bring him down just outside of the 15. The Dolphins set to go on offense for the first time behind their 25-year-old quarterback, now in his fourth NFL season, to a tongue of Iloa. Injuries overshadowed a great season from Tua last season. He led a Miami passing game that was one of the best in the league, and even more importantly, took it to the postseason for the first time in six years. That jump they were looking for from him, it absolutely occurred. Two and a throw right away. This one complete to Jalen Waddle. The game's first play produces six yards, brings up second down. Now their 31-year-old running back, Raheem Mostert. And he'll be upended here after a pickup of three, getting it out to the 25. Just play number three here on the opening drive, and it's an early third and one. Now Tua on the bootleg here. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he is going to have the Dolphins first down as they're able to convert, albeit not by much, on third and a yard. They got completion there. That's clearly an example of one side happy, the other side not very happy. Defense, very <laughs> Hey, take one or two yards. We're good with that. Offense, you've got to expect to get more on a passing play. Off of play action, tongue of Iloa. And this one too low. He released that awkwardly. It almost looked like a pitcher who gripped his fastball a little too hard and let it go late and it bounced in front of the plate. Yeah, one of those fastballs that ends up at 57 feet, not 60 feet, 6 inches. Just a little short with the arm, which is unusual because we saw him in warm-ups. He's got a big, strong arm when he delivers it with confidence. On second down, Mostert. And he's going to be hemmed in and brought down right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. Run plays like that, those big D tackles love them. That's when they eat. Especially when they're the defensive tackles that we're watching right now that dictate things on the line of scrimmage. They can't move them the way that they want to. They're just standing up, whipping the offensive lineman and making plays. They had a good job on the tackle there as they get him down shy of the first on the 35-yard strike. Their opening drive here is going to result in a punt. They got seven yards there, but not enough. Mm -hmm. 
So on fourth down, here's Jake Bailey to punt for the Dolphins. Britton Covey deep for Philadelphia. This is taken at the 23. It's a 40-yard punt, six yards on the return, and it will be Eagles football first and 10. So here come the Eagles, the defending NFC champs, led out by a man who was the runner-up to Patrick Mahomes at MVP balloting a season ago. Of course, that's Jalen Hurts. And we already knew that Hurts was a good quarterback, but last year, he moved to elite status. Under his guidance, the Eagles returned to the Super Bowl and nearly won it. He's also one of the league's most dangerous players, thrown for 38 touchdowns his last two seasons and run for another 23. Hurts and the Eagles come up here first and 10, just shy of the 30. Open man, that's Devontae Smith. And he'll be taken down right away up near midfield at the 47. This drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. A partner that locked in man coverage out left and end up running a crossing route, rounded it a little bit more than a slant. And he's just going to angle himself towards the right side of the field, and that's very difficult for a defender to shadow him across all that ground. He'll get five out of the scramble and hit second down. Throwing his hurts. The Dolphins get there this time and they bring him down. The sack there by Bradley Chubb. Well, you could almost see his eyes light up defensively. I mean, as a linebacker, that's about as quick as you can get to a quarterback. So what did your third grade teacher teach you about straight lines, right? As soon as you have those, you take full advantage of them. He found a gap in the offensive line, got to the quarterback and put him on the deck. He'll get this one complete. That's A.J. Brown. And he's got another first down as he's brought down at the Dolphins 42. 11 yards for number 11. So now first and 10 as they've crossed into Miami territory at the 42-yard line. Hurts going to keep it running right. Give him four yards there on the first down keeper. From the 38 now, here's second and six. Hurts. He had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. And who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. Hurt sets up to throw it. Oh, he had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. He already came through for them on this drive. No surprise that they were hoping he could do it again. Here's Jake Elliott. Career long, by the way, for him, 61 yards. This officially a 55-yard attempt. And he's going to miss this one. That is no good. Well outside the left upright. And this will remain a scoreless game. So an empty possession there. What do you think went wrong, Charles? Well, it looked like maybe the plant leg might have given way just a little. And when that happens, guys have a tendency to pull through the ball to compensate. And in doing so, sent this one off target. So Miami coming out for their second drive. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. Now they're set up nicely at the 45-yard line after the missed field goal from 55. Motion man is Barrios. Uh, he's going to get it on the jet sweep. Trying to run inside, but nothing there. No gain on the play there. Second down. 
But defensively, they had that one pretty well figured out. Yeah, and one of the things about this play, it can be even more effective when you run a lot of motion and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off. Counting down toward the midway point in corner one. Tug of Iloa to throw on second down here. A short throw there. That's to Smythe, the tight end. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. So Tua making the completion there. You know, what's different about playing a left-handed quarterback like him? And specifically, I guess, what does this defense need to try and take away? I'll take the first part that you asked about being left-handed. We've got to find out if he can move to his right and still continue to be accurate. So I want to push him in that direction and see if he can get his body squared around and make those throws that he's used to making. The next part is, he's a dart thrower. Love those short to intermediate routes first. Sit on those and make him throw the deep ball. Not that he's not capable, but you want him to prove it to you first. Well, this might very well have been four down territory, but that's not gonna matter now. They'll get a nice throw there on third down and they're able to keep the drive going. On first and 10, it's Mostert. And he'll just plow right into a host of tacklers. Nothing there at all, and it'll be second and 10. So nothing there that time, and maybe you need to look to the O-line. They weren't able to create any space. No, they weren't, and you knew as well as I do, as many offensive line coaches we've ever met, I think that'll be addressed loudly when those guys get to the sideline. And they're usually loud and big. <laughs> On second down, Tua. And he'll complete this one to Barrios. And he gets it down to the 32. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. They'll try and run here with Mostert. Well, they hit him in the backfield, and he will not escape. And that is not going to get it done. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. Overall, I'd have to say that was just really good team defense because, to me, you can't pin that one on the running back. He had no shot there. He had a man in his face immediately. Would have been a decently long field goal, 51 yards from here, but instead they're going to go for it. They'll try it now with Mostert. And he's able to work his way down inside the red zone to the 19-yard line. How about them biting off 15 yards there on the fourth down attempt and keeping the drive alive? Remember, that was fourth and a full two yards. There's a big difference between that and fourth and maybe six inches or a yard. Yeah, you're exactly right, because when it's that six inches, you just fall forward and you pick it up, right? You just go quarterback sneak. But having to move bodies, that means you actually have to execute because they know what you're going to do. How are you going to make the right play call and get everyone into the right spot and win at the line of scrimmage? That's what they did there. In today's NFL, you hear all the time about stretching the field and creating space in order to run plays. A toss play will help accomplish that because now you're pushing a defense to chase you all the way to the edges and to the sideline. That's a nice run, probing now early to try and get things done later. And the Dolphins are going to have a first and goal as he's inside the 10, down to the seven-yard line. The first drive this unit had, they punted. This drive, much more polished, just looking crisper, aren't they, moving the ball? Maybe the first drive was a little bit of a wake-up call. Probably a little bit angry that they had to punt the ball away the first time they had it. Got motivated, got to the sideline, said, OK, let's not let that happen here as we take over again. Here's Mostert. Zone for a Dolphins touchdown. Raheem Mostert taking it in from seven yards away. And the Dolphins are on the board first here this afternoon. That almost looked too easy, and I think thanks goes to the offensive line for making it look easy. Yeah, I agree with you totally on that one. I'm not sure how much everyone understands the preparations that go into a game for an offensive line because there's a reason that running backs and quarterbacks give them big gifts at the end of the season after a big year. The consistency and the continuity it takes to know each other and execute their blocks is pretty impressive. Now 
after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. Boston Scott on the return from his end zone. So back onto the field, here come the Eagles for their second drive. And the way their last drive ended, boy, it was frustrating. They had a pretty good drive going. It was sustained, and then it stalled out, Charles, and they missed the field goal and got nothing out of it. Is that insult to injury? Because they had such a sustained drive, as you noted. So you know for the head coach, it almost felt like a little bit of failure to send out the field goal unit and then to not even see the ball go through the post. What a bummer on that last drive for them. Got to pick themselves up from that one. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Ball on the 27. Here's a second down at six. Here's Hertz to throw. Looking here for Schmidt downfield. And this will be caught at the 30. A big play there for Philly. 45 yards. When teams practice their plays during the week, they're hoping that it's going to pay off on game day. So it sure has to feel good for them when they hit them during a game. And they hit that one there for big yardage. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Off the play fake, here's Hertz. This short throw caught by Goddard. They'll give him four yards there, and it'll be second down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. From the 25, here's second and six. From the gun, here's Swift. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. After one, seven, nothing on EA Sports. Now second quarter action from Philadelphia, and it's the Eagles in possession. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. They'll stay on the ground with Swift, and a broken tackle could not free him. Taken down right at the 10-yard line. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. They'll drop to throw. Touchdown, Eagles! Jalen Hurts on target to Dallas Goddard. And the Eagles are an extra point away from drawing level. The tight end position has always been dangerous, especially in the red zone, short field. But now even more so because these tight ends aren't necessarily the tight ends of old. They're the rocked up wide receivers who have a little bit more speed, way harder to cover than before. On for the extra point, Jake Elliott. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. That time, a six-play drive, and the drive was all finished off on the touchdown catch by Dallas Goddard. This will be a touchback. Barrios deciding not to bring it out. The Dolphins offense now ready to go back out onto the field. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. 
They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. Tug of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their own 25 yard line. Meanwhile, to his throw, caught by his receiver, Hill. Still going inside the 20. And all the way in for a Miami touchdown. Tyreek Hill, 75 yards. And the Dolphins have taken the lead. And we didn't even get a chance to settle in for that drive. A quick strike of 75 yards, and they find the end zone. Don't you get the sense that film study was behind this one, that they saw something that they thought they could take advantage of? The key is calling it in the right situation. Knowing when it exists to go to it, they did exactly that. They've got to feel really good about what they did in advance of this game. Just looking down at the sideline now, their defense is like, man, can you have strung that out just a few <laughs> plays, give us a break, back out there. Hey man, get that water break and get on out there and play. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. And Philadelphia's offense ready to go again. They trail a one-score deficit, 14-7, as they come up first and 10. They'll start on the ground with Swift. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. Now a second and two. Once again, it's Swift. Looking to find a lane, but he can't rein in at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. Defense doing their job, really nowhere to run the football. Yeah, it's almost textbook, wasn't it? Every place he tried to find an open spot, there just wasn't one. Congrats to the defense, no gain. Call fitting your gaps, right? I love it. You're exactly right. is the target incomplete. Not much going on this drive. Looks like they're going to have to punt it away, CD. And right now, I know a lot of their fans are screaming for the OC to change things up, get away from what he's been calling. Sometimes you just need better execution of the plays that have been called. On fourth down, punt coming from Braden Mann. Braxton Berrios deep for Miami. Fielded at the 33. They'll score that a 36-yard punt, and it'll be Dolphin football. And now this offense comes back out onto the field. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the case. One play to get into the end zone, and now they'll try to duplicate that success here. And it's rare for those moments to happen. Incredible when they do. And you saw the celebration. Pure, unbridled joy after that one. Two and now on first down. A short throw there. That's to Smythe, the tight end. No gain on the play. And that's going to bring up second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained. So they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. Here's Tua. Sideline falls incomplete. You still hold your breath a little as a defense when Tua gets out of the pocket. You're worried about him scrambling and getting a first down. But there, he made the wise call. If there's nothing downfield, just throw it away. The Dolphins on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and ten. 
Now Tua. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. That could be the stop this defense needed to get them back on track. They've been pretty well dissected by the offense here in the first half. After that possession, now they know that they can compete with this offense. Jake Bailey on now to punt here on fourth down. And looking up into the sun, he's able to make the fair catch inside the 20-yard line. A 41-yard punt there with no return. And the Eagles will have it taking over first and 10. Try and start this drive in the air. This short throw caught by Goddard. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. Second and a couple. In motion left comes Brown. And they'll fake it there on the jet sweep, and instead, he'll swim. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. And that's the way to do it. Handed to someone with vision and good footwork and handling a little bit of power, and you find a way to pick up first downs. First down, and they go with Swift again. He's still barreling through. down to the 35 yard line a big pickup of 38 what we saw there that's what we know that he can do he can break tackles and turn them into big runs and that's what he did and what is the buzz phrase nowadays in football for a guy like that contact balance the ability to go through trash come out the other side avoid and run through contact and keep your balance So that changes things a bit. Here's a first and 10 all the way down at the 35. Now Hurt's going to keep it running left. And he'll follow his blockers there all the way down to the 23-yard line. Now a stoppage, and oh, we've got Chubb shaken up on the play. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. and 10 at Swift. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. Second and seven from the 20. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. Multiple defenders there to drop him for a loss of four. I thought there at the end he may have had a chance to release that, but that pocket closed a little too quickly and down he went. Yeah, he was certainly trying to do everything he could to extend the life of the play, probably counting in his head. One, two, and then he ran out of time. From the gun, it's Hurts. Flush to his right. And that'll be incomplete with the penalty marker down as well. And I think he was beyond the line of scrimmage when that ball left his hand. So since that last play got nothing, they'll go ahead and decline the penalty. And that forces a fourth down situation.
So Hertz is off, and on comes Jake Elliott for the Eagle field goal. Right hash mark of 42 yard attempt. The kick by Elliott is good. And they'll cut the lead back down to four now at 14-10. So he missed his first attempt, remember, but this time he gets back on the bike and knocks it home. Yeah, and sometimes that first one can really impact you moving forward. It can just stay with you too long and affect everything else you do during the game. In this case, though, able to shake it off. He's riding high again. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. This taken in right around the goal line. And they will wrangle him down a couple yards shy of the 30. The Dolphins offense now heads back on the field. Obviously not the intended goal last drive. They had to punt the football, but still they've got the lead here and now a chance to add on to that lead if they can get points on this drive. First and 10 upcoming. Two and the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at their own 28 yard line. Going to the air, tug of Iloa. Got a man, it's Barrios complete. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. That one good for 20 on the catch and run. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. From the 46, here's a second and four. Again, they'll run it with Moster. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. Only a yard in the pickup there, and it'll bring up a third down. And this is why aggressive defensive coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D lineman to make the play. They'll come up now third and three. Looking to pass to him. And they'll get this on the screen to Mostert. And he's got this down to the 35. The Dolphin passing game rolling here. They've got another first down. Let's give a little credit there. The offensive play caller sends that the screen pass was available. Whenever you're getting a lot of heavy pressure towards your quarterback, that's when you're thinking about running the screen and using that pressure against the defense. And it worked very well there for a first down. Setting to throw on first down is Tua. And the pressure gets there, and Tua is going to be taken down. James Bradbury running in and finishing that play on the corner blitz. Well, how about that? The defense's first sack. It doesn't come from one of the usual suspects up front. It comes from the secondary. Yeah, I think they caught the quarterback off guard a little bit because he wasn't able to account for the possibility of that blitz and change the blocking assignment. He comes through and puts him on the ground. So five yards here, five on the play. And it'll be a third and about 13. And not an easy spot here. They'll be in search of 13 yards to try to pick up the first. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. Pressure comes and down he goes. The Eagles get there for the sack. Big sack with a loss of five. Add another one to the total of Josh Sweat, who surprised many with a Pro Bowl season in 2021, but he certainly earned it. A career high, 11 sacks. And the putter Bailey on now as he sends this one away. And this will depend on the spot as it sails out of bounds. And they'll say it sailed out at the 10-yard line. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. 
And last time able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. They'll take it. Just I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. On the ground, it's Swift to start the drive. And he's brought down, but not before they get it across the 20-yard line. 83 yards on the ground here for Swift. He's got a first down as well. well he's broken off some big-time runs here in this first half. Man, let's just face it. When you go into a game, you think you've got the plays that are going to work, but when you actually get out there and they're starting to happen, your confidence rises, and he's running with terrific ability right now. Running game working, they'll stick with it on first down. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. And that run was memorable for only one reason. There's absolutely no place to run with the football. No gaps, no creases, no gain. Here's second and 10. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. This short throw caught by Goddard. Third and five. They'll set up a throw. Trying for Brown, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Eli Apple. And he will bring it back. It's a pick six and a Dolphins touchdown. They were in the dime. They had six defensive backs there. So go ahead and throw it. He threw it, and it hurt him. It's almost thrown into a blanket of coverage, isn't it? You talk about the best defenders you have are the defensive backs. Six of them on the field. You're almost asking for trouble, and that's exactly what they ran into. Ended up throwing a pick six. Yeah, six defenders and six points. Sanders now to add the extra point. It's good, and it's 21-10. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six, and now the kick is away. And he brings this out past the 20 to the 24. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. Now remember, they were just out here a moment ago through the pick six, so we'll see if they can take better care of the football this go around. Yeah, and sometimes, partner, I think it's almost better that you just throw the pick six and you come right back out on the field. You're not over on the sidelines dwelling for it for very long. You're not hearing everyone say, oh, hey, you'll get them next time. Hey, don't worry about it. All that stuff just goes right out the window. You're right back out on the field with a chance to atone. Hurts now hoping to make up for that pick six. Airing it out deep for Smith. And he bats it away and it falls down incomplete. Well, we just saw something you don't ordinarily see, and that's him trying to deep ball after throwing a pick six on his previous pass. Normally, they give him something safe to get his confidence back. Instead, they let him fire it downfield, albeit unsuccessfully. Second down, here's Jalen Hurts. They'll try and set up the screen to Swift. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. Now, hang on here, because DeAndre Swift injured on that last play and in need of a little assistance. So as the medical staff takes a look, we'll step aside. Let's 
ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. He'll look to throw. Oh, and his early struggles continue. Here's another one intercepted. Picked off by Jerome Baker. And it's a terrific return here as he's going to have him set up with a first and goal right at about the six-yard line. So that changes things. You get the interception, and then to boot, a good return tacked on. And really, it was down to him versus the quarterback on the return, and that's one you would think the defender would win. But a nice job there of seeing the play all the way to the end and making the tackle by the QB. And here comes Raheem Mostert in the Miami offense. We're in the second quarter. They've got the lead. The lead, though, not so much because of the ground game, because of their air attack, Charles. So what they're seeing so far is the possibility of things loosening up later in the ground game. Through the air first, maybe they have to start respecting that even more as the game goes on, and then there will be running lanes to find later. Yeah, try to get him more involved here on this drive, maybe. After the turnover, it's Tua. And this is caught. For the moment, it's a touchdown, but multiple flags down, so let's sort this out. Touching. So reverse the celebration. We'll see if they have something else in their bag of tricks. And isn't that always tough to watch when they score and you see the excitement and then when they realize those points aren't going to count? Can they get it back together and find their way back to the end zone? They come up here with another shot from the six-yard line and it's second and goal now. Tua sets up to pass it. And he will take it in for a Dolphins touchdown. Tua Tonga Vailoa, a six yard touchdown run. And the Dolphins are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Well, there's something that goes back to the early years of his career. Remember, he had three touchdowns in each of his first couple of seasons. None last year as they've tried to dial back his running, especially down close to the goal line. Sanders on for the extra point. And the lead is up to 18 now. Well, they got the ball in great field position. One play later, boom, end zone. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. Philadelphia getting sent to take the field. And Charles, we'll see what they can do here. Not a ton of time left, but enough certainly to get points out of this drive. And they need them right now because they're trailing. Yeah, this is exactly why you practice a two-minute drill all through camp and at least one practice each week before a game. A minute left, more than enough time to string a few completions together, reach the end zone, and then make that walk back to the locker room just a little more animated. He's going deep for Brown. And this is incomplete. Oh, he looked like he had a pretty good line on that one. That would have been a big play, but he could not pull it in. And that is not what you expect from a receiver of his caliber. Sometimes you get a little ahead of yourself. You don't look it in, and all of a sudden it's on the ground. A surprise to all. Second down, here's Hurts. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Now the Dolphins going to burn the first of their timeouts. So as they talk it over, we step aside. So after that sack, Hurts and the Eagles, tough spot here, third and long. They'll send a receiver in motion to the left. Now they show Jet Sweep, but instead a run up the middle here. The Dolphins gonna take their second timeout as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime.
Out now is the punter, Braden Mann. Now a hit and a loose football. But it looks like one of the DBs has it. And that's what friends are for. <laughs> right. And as the returner, you know who you're buying dinner for later. Oh, without a doubt, because he just took care of you and your team in a big way. You know, you turn it over there, that's a big momentum changer and put your defense in a bad spot. The Dolphins taking over now late in this first half. And with a little under a minute to go, still time to try to put a drive together to add to their lead, should they so choose. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Tua going to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Two yards to go, second down. Here's Tongue of Iloa to throw. That is incomplete. This defense can use some more of these types of plays. How about him reading it, driving on the football, and he's right there for the pass breakup. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. Throwing now is Tugabailoa. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. And with apologies to Dylan Thomas, apparently they're not going to go gently into the half. They're still out there firing haymakers. They took a chance on a deep ball there, but it winds up incomplete. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. Fair catch signaled for and taken at about the 15-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And control of the football switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. Already at the line, this Philly offense set to go. And with 10 seconds left, not really enough time to put something together. They'll indeed try to run it out as they start on the ground. And defensively, they're just looking to keep him contained as they're able to get him down. So we've reached halftime here, and it's the visiting Dolphins taking a lead to the locker room. As we'll get you down the coast to Orlando for Jonathan Coachman at REA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome everyone to our brand new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. It was Raheem Mostert, the veteran who did some damage in that first half. He wound up finding the end zone on a touchdown run to help give his guys the advantage here at the break. Okay, Coach, thanks as always to you and the gang in Orlando as we welcome everyone back in for quarter number three. It's the Eagles ready to see the football first, and they trail here as we resume action in this third quarter. Taken at the goal line. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. The Eagles ready to go on offense to begin quarter number three. And you have to think, Charles, down three scores already. They need to play an almost perfect second half to have a solid chance. And that absolutely starts with finding some way to put together a touchdown drive here. They need to be smart, fast, efficient, get the ball to the end zone, and do it again multiple times in order to have a chance to win this game. 
Hurts and the Eagles come up here first and 10 at their own 26. Third quarter starts with a run from Swift. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. On that play, it was the defensive front that won the battle. They out leveraged the offensive line, got into the backfield, and held him to no gain. Now it's second and 10. Swift going to try up the middle. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Hurt sets up to throw it. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Hurt's dangerous when he runs that football. He's got a first. gun they'll look to throw out route pass complete to Goddard and taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40 a good gain again that's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays fifth catch of the game for him there yeah the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher used to be occasional right safety valve throw one to him every so often but more, mainly they want him out there to block Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. I don't care what sport you're playing. Everyone likes to build up a little momentum, don't they? And look at this, back-to-back -back completions to the big target at tight end. That one not as profitable as the other, but still a decent gain. And they run the option on second down. Hurts fumbles it. And this is picked up by the Dolphins. And his guys are going to get the football at the 28-yard line. And this is one of the dangers of letting your quarterback run the football. And now, look, he goes through ball security drills just like a running back does. But most of the time, the quarterback swings the ball away from his body. And in traffic, sometimes they forget to protect it. So here are the Dolphins now. They get ready for their first possession of the second half. And they had the big halftime lead. Their defense just helped them out further by forcing the turnover, so things are starting to look pretty rosy. They certainly are, but they've got to be careful about getting complacent, though. They still need to go out and run their offense efficiently. Tug of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. And this one incomplete, threw it down at the feet of his receiver. The defender certainly didn't forget about him leaking out of the backfield. There's a guy ready and waiting to pick him up in coverage, and that throw had no shot. Second and 10. They'll set up to throw. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. Oftentimes when you're losing a game and the team's still throwing with this kind of a lead, you start playing a little more physically. And they took that opportunity right there to be extremely physical and force that incompletion. Throwing his tongue of Iloa on third down here. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. That gain on third down, good for 28. And that's well executed there on third down. And I love the confidence that they had to let their tight end try and find some space in the middle of the field right in their quarterback's line of vision. And QBs love to make that easy throw, and they hooked up there for a first down. So from Philadelphia territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Running the counter with Mostert, and he's going to be stopped at about the 37. 
49 yards rushing for him now to this point. A seven-yard pickup brings up second and three at the Eagles' 37-yard line. Now second and three. Play action, now it's Tua. This will be caught, it's Waddle. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. They came out with an aggressive mindset to start the third quarter, and I wouldn't be surprised to see them take more of these type of deep shots as this game moves along. They connected there. They expect to connect on more before this one's over. Mostert going to be hit and met at the line of scrimmage. They get him down at the three. Only a yard on the pickup there. Second and goal. And they'll turn to the power game to try to get in. And he'll take this into the end zone for a Dolphins touchdown. Alec Ingold, a three-yard touchdown run as his guys have opened up a very comfortable lead. And they just powered it in right there, Charles. Three tight ends out on the field, the fullbacks for the defense. They knew what was coming. They knew, but they weren't able to stop them. They knew they had to meet them with a little bit of force. But on that play, the big guys up front won the day. Extra point up and good by Sanders, and they open the lead up now to 25. Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Philadelphia's offense ready to give us another look. But we haven't exactly been treated to a nail-biter in this one, CD. And if they cannot score here, this one's pretty much all but over. Are right, you saying that you feel like people are starting to think about getting out of here, maybe beating the traffic in order to get home or to their final destination? Uh, yeah, I don't think there's a whole lot of reason to hang around, especially if they can't score here. Yeah, you're right about that because it has been pretty clear who the better team has been in this one. And in a league that we talk about every game being a one score game as we go into it, watching this blow out, let's just say it's been unusual. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. For as many sacks as this defense has, you can understand their willingness to try and get upfield and get another. So what a really smart play call here to use their aggression against them, go with the screen, and they're able to get the first down. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. Throwing his hurts. He's got Smith here. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. Hurts finding Smith for the Philly first. There's a nice pickup right there, and after watching that play, I'm thinking about all the lost opportunities that they've had so far in this game. But right now, just focus on continuing to move the ball the way they did on the last play. And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and 10. And some solid footwork there as he'll take this down to about the 38. 12 more yards there and another first down. I'd sure love to offer some advice to the defensive coordinator, but his guys are just getting run over by an offense that's executing like a well-oiled machine. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They will run straight ahead with Swift. 
101 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Second down and four. Hurts. And he drops it incomplete. And their struggles continue here. It's been clear in this matchup which side has been the more physical one. It's been this defense. And here's another example on that last play. Here's the seventh play of this drive. This is third and four. Here's Hurts to throw. Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked off by Deshaun Elliott. And the Dolphins are going to get the football back at their own 17. So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense, first and 10. They go play action with Hurts. He's going to get that to Swift underneath. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. On second down, Swift. And once again, the Dolphin defense holds firm as they'll stop him behind the line of scrimmage. He winds up giving a yard back there, and now it's third and two. You know, it's become cliche, but we have seen it and observed it. When runners have days like what we're seeing right now, they often take their offensive linemen out for stakes afterwards, don't they? They all go buy them dinner. But after a play like that, he might reduce it. Might go to the corner and just grab a hot dog or two, huh? Hey, I mean, they've still been blocking for him well in this game. They don't get one mulligan up front. Okay, so what we're saying then is we're going petite filet <laughs> instead of porterhouse. Eight How's ounce. That? Eight ounce is good. All right, just check it. Coverage was awfully tight there on third down. They actually closed off all the passing lanes, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. The kick by Elliott is good. And they're back within three scores as it's now a 22-point game. So they got the turnover started with great field position, but in the end, the defense able to hold firm, and they only get three out of it. And I like what you said right there, that defense able to hold firm, backed up into the shadow of their own end zone. Goalpost right behind them. They had to make sure they didn't give up the six, and boy, they came through in a big way. To them, even though they gave up three, that's a win for their side. After the field goal, here's Elliott to kick it away. Barrio is going to bring this out of the end zone. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Miami's offense set and ready to go. and the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at their own 23. Now a play fake. Here's Tonga Bailoa. He'll let this go deep for Waddle. And he knocks the ball away and it falls incomplete. Offense is all over, continue to be aggressive and most people never turn down a shot at a deep ball, but oftentimes it attracts a little bit of extra attention and it did on that play and that one got knocked away. Second and 10 now, third quarter action from Philadelphia, PA. A run with Mostert up the middle. And he'll be taken down right around the 27. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Now Tua. Eagle pressure too much this time. Down he goes. Jalen Carter coming in to drop him for a loss of eight. And it also brings up fourth. 
Carter showing off just a bit with that sack. And can we remark just how perfect a landing spot he got in Philadelphia? Reunited with a bunch of Georgia teammates, adds another potential star to maybe the league's best defensive front. The Dolphins will send out the punter now as he's on for the fifth time here today. And a fair catch taken back near about the 35, 36 yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And out will come the offense as they take over. and the Eagles come up here first and 10 at their 36-yard line. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And he fights forward for a modest two-yard gain, second down. From the 38 now, here comes second and eight. They're going to look to throw. And he can't find anywhere to go with it. And he goes down. Christian Wilkins able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. And keep in mind, in addition to the two sacks that he now has, CD, he's also had a couple of quarterback hurries. He's been very disruptive. To put it mildly, and it reminds me of the time I asked an offensive tackle who struggled like this in a game. He said he was telling the coach, hey, what do you want me to do? This guy's just eating me alive. And the coach finally just looked at him and said, applaud. And attempted a deep ball there, and they didn't get it. But boy, they're going to need a few of those to actually hit in order to get back into this game. Good thing they do have a little bit of time here still left in the contest. Decent-sized deficit, but not one that they can't manage. The Eagles send out their punter now as he'll come on to kick this one away. Fair catch called, it's taken in right at the 20 yard line. Miami set to take over. And now you've got the clock winding down here in the third quarter. You're three scores to the good. What's your approach on this drive? Too early to fully commit to playing the clock game. Yet at the same time, you're also not going pell-mell like you would in two minute offense. This is what NFL offense is called four minute football. Take the clock out of the game a little bit, wind it down, but at the same time, keep advancing the ball down the field. On the ground, it's Mostert to start the drive. And he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two, and it brings up second down. From the 22, here's second and eight. Here's Tua. Over the middle and complete to Waddle. Here comes third down at seven. Going to the air, tug of Iloa. Able to find the open man, that's complete. There he goes, left side. And all the way in for a Miami touchdown. Tyreek Hill, two catches, two touchdowns here so far. And the Dolphins are able to extend their lead in the final seconds of this third quarter. In order to lead in a game, you're gonna get plenty of contributors, but that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. Sanders now to add the extra point. And that'll push the lead up to 29 now. So the drive there, they went 80 yards in three plays. And it ends with a touchdown pass to Tyreek Hill. Jason Sanders. 
Now after the touchdown, ready to kick it away is Sanders. And this taken in at the goal line. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. On first down, Hurts. He's got Brown on the out route complete. He's going to be out of bounds on what's going to wind up being the final play of quarter number three. We have played three quarters. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. And welcome back. We are in the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia. A lot of folks starting to make their way to the parking lot. Their guys trail big here to begin quarter number four. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Now back to throw. He's got Dallas Goddard, his tight end over the middle. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 10 yards there and an eagle first down. Well, this game was decided a while ago, and that completion there is going to artificially inflate his passing numbers. So right now, the only one really applauding probably his agent as he thinks about angling for a new contract. On first and 10, it's Hurts. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. Back to throw again. They'll try and set up the screen to Swift. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. He's had success running the football, and this is more or less an extension of that because they drop it off to him on the screen. And I'll bet he's thinking to himself, if I didn't have to slow up a bit here in traffic, I could have really made something out of that one. Again, he'll drop to throw. That is caught, and he is going to have an Eagles first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. And if they're throwing on third down, it's a good bet. They're going to look his way. He's the most reliable of their receivers, and he comes through there with a nice grab for the first down. They'll throw on first down with Hurts. And his throw's going to be incomplete. As a corner, you have to be able to run with guys step for step downfield and man coverage and make up ground quickly in zone. You have to put yourself in position to make plays just like that one we saw there. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Hurts sets up to throw it. Over the middle complete. It's Smith. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. Even against double coverage, he found enough of an opening for a noticeable gain. Two guys on him, yet he finds a way to uncover downfield for the completion. The Eagles on third down. They're hitting at just 30%, three for 10. They're looking at third and a few inches. He's got his target. That's complete. And he is going to have an Eagles first down, and he'll have it by plenty as they're able to keep the drive alive on third and inches. They kept the receiver in the short field, but that let his quarterback get the ball quickly to him before either guy in double coverage could react. They'll look to throw again. Open man has got her to tight end. Touchdown! Dallas Goddard, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Eagles get a small measure of revenge as they cut into this fourth quarter deficit. For a big tight end, he can sure move like a slot receiver when he gets ahead of steam going. And as a defensive back, you've got a big decision to make when he's moving like that. Elliott good on the extra point, and that'll cut the lead down now to 22. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all, and the drive was all finished off on the touchdown catch by Dallas Gowder.
after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. And not willing to risk another fumble, he'll sit on this one. It's a touchback. Tyreek Hill making his way back out towards the huddle. Not a bad day at the office there. Maybe he would like the catch number to go up a little bit, but I think most guys would say two catches, two touchdowns, eh, that's okay. I think if the catch number goes up, we start talking about the record books because at that pace, this type of efficiency, oh yeah, I think I'd throw it to him a little bit more often. Tug of Iloa and the Dolphins come up first and 10 at their 25 yard line. He'll look to Mostert to start things out. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. This defense starting to buckle down when they need to, and right now they're winning this fourth quarter, losing the game, but they're winning in the fourth quarter. And what a fine line it is about what they're trying to get done because. They're down, so they obviously need the football, need a score, but they can't be so aggressive as to give up their edge, their gaps, and have the offense hit them with a big play. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. Well, fourth quarter with a three-score lead here, Charles, but they're still going back to the air and looking for more points. Well, with this game well in hand, it's an opportunity for the guys to come off the bench and get a chance to play. And a lot of coaches, they want to run their full playbook no matter who's on the field. On third down, here comes Mostert. And he'll wind up losing yardage here back at the 21-yard line. And a loss of three to bring up four. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and 10 at their 36-yard line. They'll try and start this drive in the air. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves them with two to go on second down. And a really nice play call there to start the drive, especially if you're a team that has a little bit of a reputation for throwing it downfield. You come out, and you think maybe you can catch them off guard a little bit, and they did. Little screen pass, backdoored him, and that time worked well for a solid game. Second down, here's Jalen Hurts. And this all incomplete. He tried to check it down to his running back and nearly had the ball picked. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone, and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. He's got a man, that's Zacchaeus. And he is gonna have an Eagles first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. You cannot write these guys off just yet, not with a quarterback like that under center. You mean it actually crossed your mind with him running the team that you could actually maybe write this game off? Not yet. Not a chance, not with him. We've seen it too many times. Throwing his hurts. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Smith. That's good. The completion there for seven yards at its second down. They run out of the gun with Swift. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Nice run to some new digs for Swift, the biggest name to be dealt during this year's draft. Had some tough times in three years with the Lions, but the good news for him, he's now in Philadelphia and knows exactly how to get the most out of a versatile runner. 
on the option to give to Swift here. Down at the 25. From the 25, here's second and six. Hurts. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And this is picked up by the Dolphins. And his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. And I don't know that that fumble is going to matter a whole lot. You look at the deficit here in the fourth. It doesn't matter. The coach on the sideline still scratching his head. Yeah, not only scratching his head, but probably writing a note or two about, we're going to address this come practice next week because maybe that's the reason we're down this far. Doesn't matter at this point, but being sloppy throughout the game, not going to help him improve. and the Dolphins now with a first and 10 at the 34. They'll start on the ground with Mostert. And he'll get this up to about the 40. 58 yards rushing for him now to this point. They'll come up on a second and four now from the 40-yard line. Once again, it's Mostert. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. Hate to be blunt, but it is just continuing to prove to be the case that this O-line is manhandling this D-line right now. They deserve to roll up their sleeves and show up their biceps because they're doing exactly what you just described, manhandling the defensive front. They've got the leverage, they are powering through, and they're controlling this game. And he'll be brought down at the 50 after a gain of about five. Ball right on the 50-yard line. Here's second and five. Now a give to Mostert running right. And he's going to be stopped up at about the 47-yard line. Still a couple yards short of the first as the three-yard gain brings up a third down. They'll try and run here with Mostert. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. They'll get nine out of that one, and as a result, the drive continues. Well, I don't think there's any question, Brandon, at this stage, the stop troops, the defensive guys, they've got to use their three timeouts here. They've got to stop them and get the ball back. Yeah, if you're in that two to three score deficit window that they're in now, you got to get it ASAP. Yeah, no doubt about it. Stop them, use your timeouts. Easier to move the ball on offense without timeouts than to stop them on defense without using them. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Pretty straightforward play there by the linebacker. He saw the run, went with straight-ahead pursuit, and dumped him behind the line of scrimmage. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So the Dolphins have it as we welcome you back in. And no doubt what they're looking to do is just salt away the final couple of minutes and escape with a win. It's a gain of about three, but it's going to leave them with third and still seven yards to go. On a second and long, it's really nice to see an offense that has enough confidence to run the football in that situation. I think that goes back to their practice and game planning. They've seen things that they've seen on tape and in previous games that led them to believe that even in a long-distance situation, they can still run the football and gain enough yardage to put themselves in a good spot on third down. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. That pass just a little bit off. It looked like maybe he tried to force it in there. Game speed, always different, no matter what you do in practice. You can't simulate it, right? So your decision making, everything has to be a little bit quicker. Sometimes it can throw you off until you adjust. Now, 
Sanders' kick is good, and the Dolphins will add on to their lead. So they hadn't called on him at all until this point, but he comes through here and buries one from long range. Yeah, that's awfully impressive because usually kickers like to get that first one out of their system in the first quarter, sort of get them into the flow of the game, but to come in this late and knock it down from long distance, give him a lot of credit. After the field goal, here comes Sanders to kick it away. And he'll be stopped up at the 25. Now Philadelphia ready to get going on offense again. Where we stand right now in the fourth quarter, this one pretty much out of reach. And Charles, I know they're going to be disappointed about several things with this ball game, but the self-inflicted wounds, they've had several turnovers you would have to think that's going to be something they're going to discuss heavily in the film session in the coming days. You're yeah, absolutely right about that, partner, because they're going to have to sit in that film room and watch every error that they made and figure out how to not do it in the future. And mentally, I think a lot of the guys are already starting to think about, OK, how do we put this behind us and get better for the next time out? This they'll use as motivation for the rest of the time that they play to hopefully never be in this type of situation again. And the ball on the 30, here's second and four. Here's Hertz to throw. Over the middle to Smith. And a nice job to break free of one tackle, but it slowed his momentum somewhat, and he's taken down right after. Here's third and three. They'll set up to throw. And the Dolphins rush gets home. Down he goes. Now the Eagles will use the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 28 seconds to go in this football game. The decision made for them. They've got to go. It's fourth down. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And it's incomplete. They could not convert, and they turn it over. They had to go for it with such little time remaining, and the Dolphins get the football in great field position. So they tried to go for it for pride, but it really wouldn't have mattered. This one, it was already determined. No doubt about it. This one was over a while ago. The D can only stop it one more time as they take the knee. So a victory here for the Miami Dolphins.